Hello, this is Mike from Storytelling with Data, and welcome to Let's Create a Line Graph in Excel. Today's lesson is plotting the data. In this video, we're going to talk about how to take a data source that contains a single data series and plot that data series on a line graph using our chosen tool, Excel. In this series, we are going to create a line graph using monthly sales data from a single organization. Our source file contains data for the last six months, as well as projections for the next three months. At the end of our series of lessons, your final graph will look something like this. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to create a line graph from this data, and you'll know how to get rid of some of the clutter that our tool's default settings put into our charts. So let's open up our data source, Lines, Sales, Walkthrough. This is your first chance to get a sense of what the data looks like. We have one row of data. It's for our sales data. You can see that series is labeled here as sales. We also have a column for each month of data that we have. Some of it is actual data, and some of it is projected data and that data runs from October of a previous year through June of the current year. And you can see that the numbers are in thousands and they're to the penny. So there are a number of different ways you can get a chart on your worksheet. The first way is to go to Insert from your menu, and then right over here to Recommended Charts, and you can see all of the chart options there on the right. If you click on the line, you see you get a wide variation of types of lines to choose from. We have 2D lines, we have 3D lines, which you'll never use, we have 2D area charts, which we won't get into here, and we have 3D area charts, which you will never, ever, ever use. You can also go into the Insert menu from your menu bar, and then you can scroll down to Chart, and you can select from one of the options here. I tend to like the charts in the ribbon because I can see what they look like and I get the variations of them visibly. So let's go to here to 2D line and we'll select line chart with markers. Sometimes people say line chart, sometimes people say line graph. Technically it's a graph, but you can say either one. Ultimately what happens is you get a blank chart. I'm going to move this over and I'm going to make it slightly larger so that it's easier for us to see. I hold shift down when I grab one corner of this blank chart so that the dimensions of the chart stay the same as I drag it. Next I'm going to want to assign the data to the chart. I have to tell Excel where the data is that I'm going to use to build this chart. So I right click from within the chart area. I go down to select data. I click that and then a menu box will pop up. Now we can tell Excel where our data range comes from in two ways. We can either type it in, or we can go directly into our worksheet and we can highlight those cells directly. So if I click in A1, I hold the mouse button down and I drag all the way out to cell J3, that tells Excel that that is the range of data that I want to use for my chart. I could have just typed that directly into that chart data range window as well, but the syntax can get a little complicated, so it's easier just to drag if it's a simple range. Here you see that sales is the series that we're going to be using. We only have one data series for this chart, and it is called sales. For sales, the name of the series is sales, obviously. You can see it highlighted with the marching ants here in Excel, in cell A3, and the data values for sales, let me get this out of the way here, you can see now the marching ants show you which cells the Y values come from, and those are the values that are going to be on our vertical or our Y axis. Our horizontal axis is going to be those months. Now right now, the category labels, the axis labels, include both actual projected and the months. It's a two-level axis. And we're going to want that maybe for later, but right now that's a little too complicated for our simple line chart. Right now we're really only going to want to pay attention to these months, October through June. 
So we can change it by redragging our marching ants to change what that range is, or we can just type it in. I'm going to go in here and type it in. Instead of going from B1 to J2, I would rather it go from B2 to J2. So I'm going to go right here and type it in, B2. And then as I click out of it, you'll see the marching ants are going to now highlight that one row of values instead of the two. You don't have to worry about hidden and empty cells for now. Let's just click OK and our chart shows up. So this is technically a line chart or a line graph, which is fine, but there's a lot that I don't care for about it. One is that the text is way too small in this chart compared to the size of the chart that I want to have. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the font and change the font size. Since my whole chart is currently selected, I can go over here to the left and go to the home menu item. That'll give me the home ribbon where I can change the font family and the font sizes. First, I'm going to go into the family. I'm going to change from Calibri to Avenir, which is what I prefer for my charts. And then instead of selecting a number for my font size, I'm just going to click this increase font size button because that increases everything in the chart proportionally. Now my axis uh, text is at a size I can read, but I would like my title size to be slightly larger. So I'm going to go in, select that on my own and make it larger and then actually make it bold face by making it Avenir heavy. So now we're in better shape, but there's a lot more I can do to this chart. There's a lot of clutter in here that I want to get rid of before I start working on tailoring this chart to my specific needs. One of the first things I always want to get rid of and that you should always want to get rid of are the grid lines in your chart. Now you can select your grid lines by manually clicking on them. You can see that they are highlighted because you can see the ends of them are on blue dots. Or you can go into not format but chart design actually. The chart design tab. And going over to add chart element here, you can scroll down to grid lines and you can turn off all of your grid lines. The next thing I would do is start changing the way my vertical axis numbers appear. There are seven digits here to show $90,000 and zero cents. That is way too many numbers. I'm much more inclined to show this axis in tens of thousands or in thousands. So I right click on the axis and scroll down to format axis and that pops up my format axis box. So you can see that there are axis options and text options here. There are axis options on the left, text options on the right, but axis options is what we are going to focus on here. This tab with our little bar chart. So in axis options we get to tell Excel what the maximum and minimum values of our y-axis are and also where our tick marks are going to be. Right now it's every 10,000. That's a little tight. Let's make it every 20,000 instead. You'll notice that makes Excel pop the top value up to 100,000 so it's nice and even. The next thing we're going to want to do is look at some of these other options under axis options. One is tick marks. We want to see them. So we're going to change major type from none to outside. That means we want the tick marks to be outside of our axis. Labels, we're definitely going to want an axis title, an axis label, and then the number. This is the format of the number that we're showing. Do we want it to be just a regular number? No. Do we want it to be special? No. You'd think so. But in fact, that's for zip codes and phone numbers, social security numbers and like. We could do it customized. There's a number of codes that we can use in Excel to make our formatted numbers special. But we don't actually have to do that. We can go right back up to currency. And we can use currency to show it as dollars. We want to show it as dollars. We want to show it with zero decimal places. But we don't want to show it with all of these thousands 
So how do we change this? How do we make it so instead of showing 100,000 as our top value, it's only showing, let's say, 100? You'd think it would be a number. It's not. It's way back up in Access Options under this Display Units drop-down. And there we can select thousands. Once we've done that, our Access now shows 100, and it has that little thousands label on the left. I would want to keep that except that I'm going to want to modify it a little bit, and so are you. So we're not going to show that label on the chart just yet. That's it for this tab. But let's move over now to another tab, the one that looks like a paint can. That's where we change the look and feel of our axis. Specifically, we want to change the line. It's a blue color now, and that's not what we want. We usually want our axis color to be kind of a gray. Actually, let's make it an even lighter gray than that, this one halfway down. Our tick marks and our axis are going to be the same color. Let's change this for our horizontal axis as well. I do that by clicking on the horizontal axis and making the same change in my format axis panel. And now that I'm here on my horizontal axis, let's click on those bars again. And let's make a couple of changes here. One in particular I want to do is make the axis position of my values not between the tick marks, but on the tick marks. That makes it easier for us to see in this line graph where our data values actually are. And as long as we're putting things on the tick marks, we should show the tick marks. Let's change that here as well. Our major type of tick mark is on the outside. Now that we've done that formatting, our line chart is actually in pretty good shape. We have the beginnings of a message that we would want to say about our six month sales. We have all of the data graphed on a line. We have a clean vertical axis. We have a clean horizontal axis. Everything is legible. But clearly there's a lot more that needs to be done for this to be able to convey an actual message. We're missing a lot of text. We're missing a lot of additional context we could add and we're nowhere near where we want to be by the end of our process. The next step in lesson two is going to be how to use color and size and other elements to make the line that we're showing make more sense in context. So I hope to see you in lesson two.